This is The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Let's quickly look at our second conversation. Uh, it's about the issue of padding in government agencies. The ugly trend of budget padding in the federal government's annual appropriation continues unabated, and that's despite detections and report of incession of excess budgetary allocations and duplication of projects by ministries, departments and agencies, as well as uh, the legislature. Just recently, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offence Commission, ICPC, revealed that a total of 400 billion naira was inserted into the federal government's budget for the 2021 and 2022 fiscal year. According to ICPC, the 2021 budget totaling 13.59 trillion naira was padded by civil servants in the various MDAs with duplicated projects worth 300 billion Naira. And uh, project duplication also worth uh, 100 billion were also smuggled into the 17.12 trillion Naira uh, 2022 budget by some MDAs. Recall that the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management has alleged that 206 billion, 242 million, 395 million uh, was found into the budget without its knowledge. In the same vein, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zaina Ahmed, has refuted allegations of budget pathing by some ministries, departments and agencies. We have Muktak Mohammed, uh, developmental economist, joining the conversation this morning. Muktak, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. All right. Let's start off on this note. Why is budget padding still an issue, especially when uh, there's been an introduction of zero budget system by this administration, Buhari's administration? Well, I don't think they've done that. If they've done that, we'll have what we're having now. They I have think what we that. see is it's we have uh, maybe, uh, maybe they've, they've done it with, uh, I mean, without putting the systems in place because if they say they've done that won't be seen all, all these um, uh, uh, figures that the member is the icpc like you said in your report that first of all came up with that report what have been done about it has any a ministry of anybody in the ministry have been arrested or tried or or interrogated up to now we don't know and um if you look at the case of biden budget pardon it has been ongoing for a very long time it used to be the legislators that would incite projects that from car government into federal government project uh we are now getting off that now what we are saying is now we are seeing that the uh, ministries and parastatals are inciting budgets that are supposed to be under ministry of uh, uh, uh humanitarian affairs now the minister of finance is now saying it's a world bank project that is supposed to be under them so they had to put it to the ministry so it doesn't um there's no clarity there's no process and there's no synergy because um, sometimes what you see in this administration is like if there's an opposition party inside the administration, because it seems to oppose themselves in a lot of things and they do it very publicly. And uh, just look at the two people that are involved in this. These are the two most powerful women in Buhari administration and people that we made to understand they have the ears and the eyes of the president. So it's unfortunate we see this happening, especially in a government that has prided itself to be a government that have come to, to eliminate corruption or reduce corruption to its barest minimum. So for me, I, I think um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a Nigerian system because we don't have system in place. We have strong men. When strong men are there, then they do what they have to do when they leave. Then if we don't have another strong man, then the, the system is back to where it used to be. So uh, where was the uh, Office of Budget Planning? What are they saying? We are not even involved in the Office of Budget Planning in all of this. It's still within the, uh, the, 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 the ministerial office. And this was a budget that went through the Federal Executive Council. Is it that they just sit down there and just approve budget without doing due diligence? So there's a lot of questions that are begging for answers. All right. So what the Ministry of um, Finance and uh, Budget and National Planning is saying is that... Um, they're denying that there's any any sort of budget padding, you know. Uh, they say these are uh, what you're seeing: the 206 billion in the in the budget of uh, Minister of um, Humanitarian Affairs, which the Minister Sadia Farouk says she is not aware of. She can't explain. Uh, the Minister of the Minister of uh, Finance, Budget and National Planning, is saying that uh, the World Bank 
is funding this amount of this money, you know, for the social national social safety net scale up project to the tune of four hundred and seventy three point five million dollars. These are this is equivalent of two hundred six billion naira, uh, using the exchange rate of four hundred and thirty five point uh, five seven naira to the U.S. dollar. Um, so, so if this is true, it means that we're taking loans uh, from the World Bank. We're taking loans from the World Bank, 206 billion naira, to go and share to people. Um, maybe they had already signed this deal some time back before now. So it's just a teachery, you know. Uh, that's what they're saying. So what are, what are your thoughts on this, if it is true? Because we have to look at the, the, the explanation alibi of the, the Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning. Well, if that is true, like the minister is saying, then it's uh, really, really bad because what we are saying is that we are still collecting loan uh, to to consume on our pledges, on our, I mean, our on our luxuries. We are not looking at um, loans that are, will be developmental to the economy because you are saying that social investment schemes. What are the social investment schemes? Why do we spend so much money? Where are the data? Who are the poor? Who are the vulnerable? Who are the people that are going to be having this uh, um, fund? How are you going to distribute it? Uh, you, if you look at it, um, the, the Ministry of um, uh, of um, Finance is saying that, uh, I mean, I think the Ministry of Material Affairs is saying that that was an amount that the Ministry of Finance uh, was telling them to put that is for the Northeast Developmental Committee. And they are saying, no, the money has been released last quarter. So there's a lot of... on, on, on um, not clarity in that uh, in that um, uh, arrangement. And if it's a World Bank project, is it that the Federal Executive Council are not aware of it? Is it that because it's a World Bank project, though it's only the Minister of uh, Finance that has the say in it? I think there should have been a meeting between the Minister of Finance and that of the Material Affairs so that they would sit down together and would have agreed that this is what it is meant for, this is it, and it's coming for the Ministry of Finance. It's meant for this. And remember that the data to be provided has to come from the Ministry of Material Affairs. So definitely, like I said, there's no synergy between the, the, the Buhari um, government or official. We have seen this um, time and time again happen openly. Remember that even the Minister of Defense also is crying foul that there are some uh, board, um, numbers that were inputted in the Minister of Defense that he is not aware of. So there have been a lot of um, allegation against the Minister of Finance and I think it's something the Minister need to um, come out and tell us the true picture or have a meeting with all of these uh, ministers that are complaining and then let us know the clear, the true picture of what is really happening. Because for now, if you are collecting that kind of huge loan with the already uh, uh, debt burden that is already in the country, and you are not explaining to it, and, and remember that any such loan, either from World Bank, IMF, will have to go to the National Assembly. Then the National Assembly have a question to answer if they actually have were the one that approved that loan and when that loan was approved. And also the World Bank has to also come out. It's either through the National Assembly or the Ministry of, of Material Affairs or the Ministry of Finance writing to World Bank to give clarity on it. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot to be said about that, especially when it's a loan that uh, we're already shouting that we've collected too much debt. Oh, well, so uh, I, because I feel like we would definitely continue with this circle of conversation, we, we keep asking. It might just be what we talk about in 2023. But so what exactly is the issue? How come we have, um, you know, bodies that are saddled with the responsibility of performing oversight functions and uh, they're not living up to expectation? What exactly is going on? Is the Nigerian factor. You and I know what the Nigerian what does factor that mean? is. <laughs> the Nigerian factor. We have seen it over the years. Um, it's all about corruption. I can tell you, you remember there was a time that the then Director General of Security and Exchange Commission, Arumoite, has to openly say that um, sometime when you come to, to meet the minister the, the National Assembly. You have to ask for uh, um, for for bribe or the other. I mean, they have to ask you to install project or for themselves to collect some money, and also inside training for their own committee members, and they may not go for those trainings. And also, we've we've seen that also play out in in ministers. Also, I mean, it it's all about the Nigerian factor. Sometimes it's the National Assembly. Um, that are not doing their oversight function very well. Sometimes the National Assembly is telling the, the parastator that they have to incite money for them to do their oversight function. So 
definitely is a Nigerian factor. But let me tell you the interesting thing about budget going to the a new administration. Um, the history of budget going to a new administration has always been that when the new administration comes in, he will also be want to present a supplementary budget because some of them don't even believe in the budget and they will have new ministers. Remember the way it works here. The minister will come in and say, look, I don't think this project will go on. So what we are seeing here, if you listen to what has been said, even by the, by the National Assembly and also by... Uh, by the budget IT, the transparency group said that what they are doing now is make sure that they, they get some money, they get this budget approved, that before the new administration comes in, some of this uh, project that will not even be implemented, money will be released for this project before the new administration comes in, because they know definitely when the new administration comes in, they will either be asking to go for a supplementary um, budget. So it's a thing that the EFCC and the Economic uh, economic Financial Committee and the ICPC should be looking at, and be, be, because these, these things are not things that are just happening. They, they know who are behind it and they know what to do, but do they have the political will to do it? I think that's where we have the problem. So I can tell you it's a Nigerian factor of somebody saying it's my turn, I have to leave now, I have to make something before I leave. And that has been the bane of our problem thus far. But, but I'm still very curious about the fact that um, I remember vividly, and we understand the hills which this government came on board uh, shortly after 2015, 2016. Uh, you know, there was a plan to adopt, of course, which was adopted, the zero budget uh, system. And then we still have all of this. And if it's the case, so if we have a system where we can curtail, you know, all of these excesses, why are we not implementing it? Why are we not practicing it? What's going on exactly? And how come those you must know that perform, you know, the, um, because it feels like it's a helpless situation. That's what it is. So we know that there's a system that we can adopt, you know, to cut the excesses where you have to be specific with every project that you're going to, you know, mention. I mean, there has to be, it has to be very intentional. That's what the zero budgeting system talks about. Not that you have to carry over from a particular period to another. So we have systems already that we can adopt. What's stopping us from doing that? It feels like we enjoy yeah, it. It's going you. to go on for a very long time. You can tell you about systems. Systems are what are supposed to be working. And again, systems are supposed to be improved upon. You know that when you are fighting a battle with a monster called corruption, it's just like what we had of recent when the CBN was saying that you have people that counterfeit the, the currency, so they have to come up with new um, security features. So it's the same thing with systems. Systems are not just something that just put there. Because once you put system, you are trying to deprive some people of of what they have corruptly enriched themselves. So they will find another means of doing it. So what you need to do, is system are meant to be improved every year. You don't just say, okay, this system is working. Uh, there's no certainty in the world these days, even in any area of the world. So you need to keep improving. So what we are seeing is that we are seeing a system that has been put in place, a system that has been studied by the civil servants, uh, remember that I've always said it, that the, 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 the corrupt system we have in Nigeria is, is, is mostly being driven by the civil servants. So you see them there. So what are you supposed to do? You are supposed to improve upon those systems as a minister as you come in. But what we see here, we see people just come in there and just sit, oh, there's already an existing system. Nobody's looking at the loophole that people are taking advantage of the system. So systems are meant to be kept. Systems are meant to be, put, um, be there. But again, systems are meant to be worked on they need to be improved because no system is perfect so you keep working towards getting the better systems like every organization and, and i think that's where we are we are not doing anything we're just leaving the system that is there and it's not working so, so do you even think that we have even tried to practice or adopt you know this system of budgeting i said it before i don't think uh, we've really done that in budgeting because uh, since the coming of this administration, budget parting, parting has been there right from 2015 up to now, we are still talking the same thing. So that tells you that there have not been any, uh, maybe that system is in, 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 it's just a system that is written there in the books, but it's not being implemented because like I said, in Nigeria, systems are implemented by strong men. And when you don't have strong men in a the place, then the systems are not implemented. You need to look at the Ministry of Parastatals that are working, and then you realize that what is making them work are the ministers, their personality that is making it work. And if you talk about corruption, remember that this administration that prides itself to fight corruption, 
than and the body language of the president is it, it, it i mean when he came it was this president was going to fight corruption so body language can start a thing but it's the it's the system you put in place that and you keep improving that will sustain what your body language is telling them so what we've seen now we've not seen anything yet i can assure you until this government leaves power on them or unfortunately or if we have a new government that is totally not of the ruling party then a lot a lot will be unveiled that will shake this nation in terms of corruption. that has been always been what has happened Muktak, um, um, just before we go you. quickly in a, in a few seconds do you think there's a way that we can ascertain uh, you know, we can be sure whether or not it's true that, you know, finances have been taken or that's been budget padding, despite the fact that you have the ministry denying this. It's not rocket science. They are tied to projects. What are, what are these projects? How much are these projects? Where is this project located? Are these projects really uh, located? I mean, are these projects really implementable? It's just for the National Assembly to do their, 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 their role, like, I mean, to go about and make sure that um, it's not rocket science. It's something that can be investigated. We have all the agency of government to investigate that. So I don't think, uh, I, like I said, um, maybe they don't have this political will. They are not ready to do that. If they are ready to do that, I don't think it's rocket science. All right. All right, Mukhtar, uh, Mohammed, uh, thank you very much for your time, and uh, we look forward to having you again soon. Thank you. And uh, that's the size of our package right here on The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Please ensure to follow us on our social media platforms, uh, the Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course on YouTube, we have Plus TV Africa. And we have a second account, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle, where you can watch our live streams from anywhere in the world. Until we return tomorrow, my name is Kofi Bartos. Thank you very much for your time. And I am Messi Epopo. We join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Stay with us. <laughs>